Hello BitsBoo, this is Craig from BitsBoo.co.uk here and in this video I'm going to be converting three miniatures for three different game systems and they're all going to represent the same character. So this was inspired by a very old White Dwarf article that's always stuck with me um, called Eternal Champion and we did do an Eternal Champion um, contest a little while ago, a couple of years now, um, based on this article. And this is an article by Francois Xavier No, who um, yeah created a Chaos character, and then converted him up in different game systems, did um, different versions of him, and um, different equipment and stuff like that. Um, it's really cool, I've always loved it, um, and his character was called Steppenwolf, so if you just Google Steppenwolf and White Dwarf you'll find a couple of articles um, in, rela in relation to this. Um, definitely worth checking out. So yeah, that's what I'm going to be doing here, um, I'm going to be doing a Nurgle character. Um, as I have a Death Guard army and a Nurgle Slaves to Darkness army. And yeah, I'm also going to make a Warcry version of him as well. So the head was actually um, designed for us by uh, Giovanni Girosa, um, who's done a few um, design pieces for us now, and they're all brilliant. Um, I went with a 3D printed head just because um, I can just change the size of it and play around a bit a little bit. Um, just suit the different game systems. I'm trying to find one head that fits all, especially um, if you're going from like 40k sort of power armor Chaos Space Marine to a little guy in Warcry. It can be quite difficult. Of course, you can find heads that are sort of similar. And I think that's what Francois did in um, the article. So, yeah, um, let's just hit the desk and jump. So, I'm going to take the exalted hero from the Slaves to Darkness. This seems like a good miniature to use as the base for this conversion. So I've got his body back and body front here. I'm going to make a couple of little changes. I'm going to get rid of the symbol. He'll start off by just snipping off with the clippers and try not to take my thumb off in the process. And with that removed, I'm going to put something else in its place. So I've got like this eye um, I don't really know what it's from. Um, do let me know in the comments if you if you do know what that's from. Um, but that's going to go on there. And with just a little bit of poly cement, I can put that in place. And I've got a slight slight angle, like so. So I want to replace the sort of tabardy bit on the front of this, just to make it look um, different to what it is. So I'm taking the cloth off, I think it's an old Chaos Space Marine from the old Chaos Space Marine kit. And I'm just going to chop away at where the little tabard bit was here. I'm going to keep the sort of chainmail bit from the bottom and I'll attach that onto this tabard once it's gone on. So just cleaning up around the edges with the clipper and I'll come in with the knife as well. So where I've clipped the tabard, obviously it's um, sort of straight out the top, but it just has a slight dip to it. So I'll be using some green stuff to fill in the gaps. I'm also going to take this little bit off the back, because we don't need that. And yeah, I'll take this little bit of chainmail and I'll stick that to the bottom as well. And again, green stuff will be used to fill in any gaps and my green stuff skills are very terrible and um, I will do my best. And with them in place with a little bit of green stuff he looks like this. I'll put the cape on as well as you can see there. And I want to take away that spike and add this spike from this um, Pascal Blightlord body I believe it is. So I'm going to take this front bit of shoulder pad And I think that will replace the shoulder pad that he already has quite nicely. As you can see, um, there's like a gap on the miniature for the front half of the shoulder pad. And that's what it looks like glued on. I'll also put another spike to replace the other one as well. So this is the um, banner arm from the Chaos Warriors kit, along with just the regular um, arm. So I've just used the hand from the Chaos Warriors and used the arm from the Exalted Hero. And this is a scythe from the Putrid Blight Kings 
And of course he's got Abasoph being Nurgle. And that's going to go on there like so. So he's really starting to take shape now and I've put his shield arm on as well. But I don't want to use the shield from that kit. Instead I'm going to use this one from the Chaos Knights. Just um, again, just to be different. I actually really like the shield this miniature comes with. Um, but maybe I'll use that on my Chaos Knights hero instead of using one of these ones. So I'm just going to chop all these little bits off the back. We don't need them. Take my knife. And just shave away at them carefully. So with that in place, he's really starting to take shape now. And there's not much left to do on him. So I've got one of these little bags that I... 3D printed and we do sell these on the website under the 3D printed resin accessories and I'm just going to stick that on his belt. Now originally I had it um, quite close to the centre and I didn't like that placement so that ended up being pushed um, back towards his cloak. I just think it looks a little bit too big in this placement. So I also attached the head as well and this is before I move the bag out of the way. And being in green resin, it really stands out, um, as you'll see with all three of these conversions. So here I've moved the bag, and I've added some pouches from the old tactical squad. I think I'll just cut one of them off, so there's only two, just to cover the gap. I think he needed something on his belt, and I do like miniatures to look busy sometimes, and with lots of accessories and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, looking at him now, I feel like he's just missing something. So what I've got here is a little um, sort of standard top thing from the Puscule Blight Lords, I believe. And that's going to go on his back, like so. So I'm going to show off all the miniatures finished at the end of the video. And in the meantime, let's do the Warcry version. So of course he has to be in the Rotmire Creed. A very sort of nergly. So I'm taking the champion from that set, or the leader. Um, I can't remember his actual name. Um, of course we've got to start by chopping off his head. Because of course we're going to put our own head here. And there will be a slight variation on this one. Which you'll see very soon. So the head comes in two halves. One bit connected to the front, one bit connected to the back. So the front's off. And the back is now going to follow. So the legs caused me a bit of an issue. I originally tried some cultist legs. Then I tried some chaos marauder legs. Um, in the end, I went for his original legs, and I just replaced the bottom of his feet with um, these Chaos Colors bits. And here I'm showing off the Marauder legs that I had built originally. Um, but they're sort of armoured and that, and I didn't really like having an armoured bottom and then an unarmoured top. And um, it was the other way round, it would have made a bit more sense, but yeah, so I didn't like that, so I scrapped that. Um, so I've now glued his other arm on, um, minus the hand. And I'm going to give him... This weapon from the Cordal, but of course you um, can't use a Flamer in Warcry, so off goes the Flame of it. And also have this Axe, um, which also belongs to the Cordal. I think these are both from their upgrade set. We also need to just take away this little bit as well, we don't need that. And yeah, I'm going to add the Axe Head to the top of this. So this version doesn't have a Scythe. But I do think the axe works very well for Nurgle. And the scale of the Cordal works really well with some of these Warcry miniatures. So for his other hand, I'm taking this piece from the Chaos Cultists. And I'm going to take this little flail again from the Cordal. And the idea is to replace the flail head from the Cultists with these three flails. Uh, from the cordal at first I need just to take the hand then I need to chop off this bottom piece as well and also just snip off the flails and I like that there's three of them oh, obviously the Nurgle symbol is usually like three skulls and things like that so I think it all works quite well and that will glue on there like so and here it is on the miniature as you see I had to sort of cut down the bottom a little bit so it looks like it's slightly embedded in the ground, just because it was just that tiny bit too long. And I didn't want to make the arm any shorter, because that would have just looked weird. 
So yeah, hopefully it still works okay, but I quite like it. So this original miniature does have a backpack piece, which I do want to keep. So I'll chuck that on there like so. And then I'll put on his head, and as you can see, he's got this little top hat. So yeah, I quite like the idea of this sort of beaded, sort of beaten up sort of top hat. So I thought quite cool. Just make him look a bit different to the other other conversions. So yeah, um, this area here is bugging me. His legs look quite thin compared to like his heavy top half. So I think he needs some sort of scabbard or something there, just to fill that area out a little bit. Now I had various ones to choose from. In the end I went with this little one, which I think is from the um, Dark Angels Deathwing set. I think it works quite well, and it's not like too large compared to the others. And here he is, and we'll have another look at him in more detail later on. Okay, so for 40k, I was going to be, or I am going to be, a little bit more ambitious with this one. So, taking the miniature from the Lord Discordant, I want to take this sort of top half sort of shawl thing that he's got, um, minus the hood, so we don't need the hood. We can chop that, chop that right off. So, yeah, some of the parts I use here are obviously not cheap, and what I do plan on doing is just making my own character to go on top of the Lord Discordant, so it's not really wasted too much. So I can just chop up the the Lord himself. And of course we also need to take the head out of this bit. And I've also chopped away the leg and the holster from the shawl. So I've got the back half of a Chaos Lord, the um, Snap Fit Plastic Chaos Lord. And um, the torso front actually lines up pretty decent with this, and um, we just need to snip away some of these random little little parts, but um, yeah, the sides the sizes seem to be pretty much spot on and very close. You see the belt how it lines up. Um, not so much on this side, but we won't be seeing any of that in the final miniature. So yeah, just a little bit more cutting until we get that perfectly lined up. So while I'm waiting for them two halves to dry. I start working on the backpack, so I'll take the Lord Discordance backpack, but I've also got this Plague Marine one, and um, from one of the Snap Fit ones, because I really like the um, sort of bolt gun hanging from it, so what I plan to do here is just use the bottom half of this one, and the top half of the other backpack, and hopefully they go together alright, and any gaps, again, can just be filled um, in with my mediocre green stuff work. So, no going back at this point. Snip right across there, and that will go on there. I'll take this top piece off this backpack, and that will sit on top of there. And where the strap is for the bolt gun, I will just refill with some green stuff. And here they are together. I'll put a layer of green stuff in, and once that's cured, I will do some more green stuff on top, and also remove that little line at the back there. And while I'm waiting for that green stuff to cure, I'm going to take some legs. So, forgive me, I can't remember the name of this miniature, but literally the bottom legs of any Plague Marine or anything like that would certainly do in this instance. I didn't want to use the Chaos Lord legs, I just don't like them. Um, this one's alright, but the other leg has all these tubes and stuff on them, and I just, I just don't like it. So, I don't want to have a mismatch of legs, so I'm very carefully going to cut this one away. And then use the two bottom halves. So here they are, and I put some blue tack on and just got them lined up in place and then glued them to the base. And then once they're dry, I'll stick the miniature on top, use a bit of green stuff to fill in any gaps. And here they are attached to the miniature, and I've used some green stuff to make a little tabardy bit in the middle. Um, I don't really have anything that was suitable to go there, not sort of flowy enough, so just drop in. And um, yeah. Um, considering like my green stuff work is terrible, I don't think that's actually too bad. Um, but stay tuned, I will ruin it. So as you can see here, yeah, there's like a line across the tabard now. I don't know where that came from, whether it was like glue or something. Um, but we'll cover that up. But as you can see, um, he's got the amazing 
super cool weapon from the Lord Discordant, which I'm just now butchering. Um, because of course he's got to have a scythe, and you can see the scythe already in the background here. Um, this is from the uh, Pascule Blight Kings. I already mentioned them once, so I shouldn't be forgetting what they're called. But yeah, the, um, obviously the Putrid Blight Lords and the Pascule Blight Kings are two very good sets. Well, I've got it wrong, wrong way around. Who cares? Um, here's his scythe. It's Putrid Blight Kings and Pascule Blight Lords, isn't it? Um, I also took the fur from the Chaos Lord to go over his shoulder. Because um, there was just like a bit of fur which just didn't do anything. And you can see there is like a gap. Um, but we'll f fix that. And speaking of gaps, there's a little gap on his leg which I think needs a little pistol holster. Like so. And I'll just push that in in place with my knife. That just covers up some of the mediocre green stuff work hiding underneath it. And as I said, I like my characters to have a lot of equipment and stuff. So next up, I put on the arm and I'm just using the Chaos Lord arm. Um, I honestly had no idea what to use here. This is the one piece of a miniature I don't really like too much. You see, I was playing around with different um, poses. And it's because of the nature of it, it just goes on at a slight angle. Which I don't like too too much, really. Um, but I put on this head at a similar angle. It kind of helps. And you can see I've put some chain across him to help cover up that bit on the green stuff. And then I'm going to hang some little bells from there. I'm going to cut these down. Um, originally I just put them on like this. And obviously, yes, as you can see, they're way too large. And there they are, all cut down. And there's just one other little piece I do add to this miniature. But we'll look at that at the end. And here are the three finished versions of our nameless character. Um, hopefully we'll find a nice, cool name for him soon. So, I think my favourite one is probably this one, the Age of Sigma one. Um, I quite like the simplicity of it, along with, um, there's a lot of changes here, and he still looks, um, you know, pretty cool. Like, um, you wouldn't sort of know st straight away to look at him, that there's a lot of changes from the original miniature, and I really like that. The big flowy cape as well, um, I really like. And yeah, I'm glad I added the, um, icon to the back. I did post pictures with and without on social media, and it was pretty much a one-way opinion on whether he should have it or not, and I do ag agree with everyone who said that he should have it. And yeah, I um, really like this one. The Warcry one, um, really cool and um, really fun to do. I love the little sort of nurgling type thing on his shoulder. I don't think I mentioned that in the conversion part. The legs do bother me a little bit, um, but they're just the best I could do. Oh, I think he works really cool, um, and I'll paint them up with the rest of the little wall band. And yeah, I love the hat. Um, it took me a little while to make the hat. Um, I made, actually made that myself, which I'm quite proud of. And then lastly, we have the 40k version, definitely my least favourite version. Um, maybe when he's painted up, my opinion will change. Um, yeah, as you can see, I've added this little bird skull on his tabard, and there's just a a lot of suit will be on show at the moment, um, but I don't think you'll see any of that when he's painted up. Um, yeah, that, that as I said, that left arm bothers me a little bit, but I really like the scythe. And I'm glad I used the Lord Discordant parts, because I think they work really cool. Um, I love his backpack, so big fan of that. Yeah, just something about that arm bothers me. It does stick out a little bit, um, which might, might be better to be a little bit closer to his body, I don't know. Um... Yeah, it's a tough one with the whole shawl sort of flow and how it is. It sort of gets in the way of um, having too many options when it comes to the arm pose. But you know, um, I think he looks pretty good. And I really like how the legs did turn out in the end, even if my green stuff skills are somewhat lacking. So yeah, do let me know which one is your favourite and if there's any other game systems or conversion ideas you'd like to me to do with this guy. I'll certainly do more in the future. Maybe a Chaos Terminator one. Um, I quite like um, the idea of maybe trying to fit him into Necromunda somehow. 
So yeah, it's not the last you'll see of him, and if you do want to see more of my conversions, um, my painted miniatures, etc., um, Instagram and Twitter are the best places to see them, um, links are all down below. And yeah, if you want to see more conversion videos on this channel, or any other videos that I make, then do feel free to hit that subscribe button, and of course, if you enjoyed this video, do give it a like. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.